This is my desk now. This is my desk at the end of this video. This is my desk now again. This is where I work for me that includes writing films, making YouTube videos, and of course my day job as a senior video editor for a digital ad agency. And this last one for the last two years has been the most time consuming. However, it's also the one that has allowed me to buy all this crap. This crap is what I'm going to use to soup up my desk. That way I can work more efficiently, which will allow me to do more work. If I do more work, I can afford to soup up my desk even more. Then I'll be able to do even more work and so on and so forth. I'm using this Viozon arm mount to hold my main monitor, as well as my light, mic, and camera for YouTube videos. I stole this setup from Caleb from DSLR Video Shooter. Lots of great videos over there. Now at $130 or so, this arm mount is every bit as functional and affordable as it is horrifically ugly. And since I prefer a more clean, minimal aesthetic, I thought about getting rid of the whole thing, replacing it with something that actually did look good, but I wasn't able to figure out a way to match this setup's functionality. With this crazy spider-like arm setup with just a few button presses, I can be ready to start filming a new YouTube video in just a few minutes. It's really efficient and I don't think I'm ever going back. And we're rolling. And we're rolling. So. Instead of getting rid of it, I'm going to improve everything around it and make it look hot by association. Now, aesthetics aside, the first objective for my desk is to clear the surface as much as possible since I hate clutter. Although you probably wouldn't believe it from looking at this disgusting mess. I'm using a six foot long bamboo top electric sit stand desk from Uplift, which I love. It's even fitted with some grommets for additional power and USB charging at the top. But with this much desk real estate, if I want to, say, pull out my notebook and start writing, I shouldn't need to be moving five things out of the way first. So to accomplish this, first I'm going to elevate my laptop off the desk and mount it to an arm. So first things first, I gotta clear all the crap off my desk. Now my desk already has a few arms. I'm gonna be adding a couple more to it in this upgrade, really turning it into a Goro of sorts for those Mortal Kombat fans out there. What I've done for the laptop arm is purchased a arm mount from Viazon, the same company that made the main stand. So I'm going to add the extra arm directly onto this pole just so there's less poles and arms just going everywhere. I was trying to move the Viazon mount over to the right so that my monitor and laptop screens were straight ahead, but the old cable management tray was in the way. So I had to get rid of that first. This did not go very smoothly. It really pissed me off, to be honest. <sighs> then I have to take all of the other arms apart, drawing and quartering this Viazon mount so that I could put the new arm on it. Then I put it all back together. My computer that powers this whole workstation is an Asus ZenBook Pro Duo with two beautiful 4K touchscreens, 32 gigs of RAM, and an NVIDIA RTX 2060 GPU. The built-in dual monitors make it far and away the best laptop editing experience I've ever had, and I still want to take advantage of both these monitors with this new setup. For an ergonomic position, I'll be setting them about the same height as my main 34-inch 4K monitor, which is actually quite high off the table so that I avoid looking down and getting that forward head tilt that computer nerds are so commonly plagued with. The mount that actually holds the laptop blocked some of the ports on the side of my laptop, so I had to get this Amazon Basics laptop mount that seemed a little precarious to me, and looking back at this footage, it was extremely precarious, and I'm actually lucky I didn't break it before I tightened everything up. But now that it's been up there for a week or two, it's solid as a rock, hasn't slipped at all, and I really trust it. As with any editing setup, I need lots of data storage. Since I can't afford a couple of giant RAID arrays, I'm going to mount all these drives that I work with regularly underneath my desk, which will clear up a lot of wires and clutter. So to do that, I'm going to use this under desk shelf with two holes in the back for cords. For some reason, the shelf itself is super heavy duty, weighs way more than I thought it would. <laughs> oh, f Are you kidding me? Do you see this? But the screws are made out of like paper mache. Unbelievable. Fortunately, even with just three screws, it was plenty stable for my purposes. I'm gonna get to cable management a little later, so ignore all the cords hanging out for now. 
For all my drives and peripherals, I use a USB 3 hub and this nifty Thunderbolt 3 hub with a built-in SSD enclosure where I've installed a 2TB SSD, which I use exclusively for editing these YouTube videos. I want to mount at least one of these two hubs under the desk as well for a super clean and wire-free desk surface. A little adhesive Velcro on the side kept the USB 3 hub mounted securely. You can find links to all of the specific gear I'm using in the description to this video, by the way. There are affiliate links, which means if you buy anything at all from Amazon after clicking them, you'll be supporting my fledgling channel at no cost to you. This is definitely my most expensive YouTube video to date, so I'd really appreciate that. It's kind of crazy that as far as technology has come, we still need so many wires. I don't know how long it's going to take for wires to become something you only see in period films, but uh, couldn't come soon enough for me. But you know, everything becomes obsolete in time. Your technology, your work, and even your desk, which I'm now setting up with some studio monitor stands. I'm gonna get some speakers added to this desk. I'm really excited about that. The reason I'm putting the speakers up on these arms is again, to clear up real estate on the desk, but also by elevating the speakers to ear level, you get better audio fidelity. Unfortunately, the speakers themselves have not arrived from Amazon yet, so moving on until they get here. And let's talk about cable management for a little bit. This is uh, always the most tedious part of the process, but so crucial for that clean, sleek look. Fortunately, I already have this big ass power strip mounted to the bottom of the desk, which powers everything, including the sit-stand motor part of the desk, with only one cord running down to an outlet. However, the cable organizer that came with the desk is too feeble for my massive power bricks. And since I also can't see through it, unplugging anything was a total disaster. You're just reaching into a black void, hoping you get the right cord and don't something else up back there. So to fix all those problems, I got this bigger see-through cable tray with plenty of spaces to run wires into and out of instead of just a few cramped holes. Yeah, around this time I started doing this thumbs up thing every time I liked something, so... These little cord wrangling zip tie type things make things way easier. You can really lock things in, but then pull them back out as needed. This takes a lot of playing around to find routes for the cords that make sense and avoid too much tangling down under the hood. Classic rubber bands always go a long way for tying cords to their power bricks, and don't underestimate good old wire ties too. Yep, now I'm just thumbs upping everything. I might start editing out the uh, thumbs up at this point. When did I become such a loser? I don't know. Why do I have to thumbs up everything? I'll also be using sticky notes on every cord to label what plug is what. This is something that I realized after I'd already set up the last incarnation of my desk was super necessary. And these little adhesive things are another way to route cables and do cable management. I don't like them quite as much as the Ziplocky ones, but they do have their purpose. Now the name of the game with cable management is just to keep everything high and tight. Cool stuff, slick stuff, neat stuff. If you're looking down on your desk, you want to be able to come almost down to eye level with the desk before you start seeing all the wires underneath. Got my sound recorder here. I can monitor my levels when I'm recording a video for YouTube, or I can unplug the whole thing from the desk and go take it on an actual shoot. And guess what has come? Time to get these speakers set up. In my day job editing ads to play on social media platforms, I honestly don't find external speakers helpful since the end user is mostly listening on their phone or headphones. When I mixed my edits with cool bass heavy sound effects, nobody even heard them. However, I may be editing a friend's horror feature film soon, I want to be doing some of my own narrative projects soon, and I want to be ready to work with a full spectrum of audio in order to more effectively manipulate the emotions of my audience. Alright, let's try out some of my favorite royalty free music on these new speakers, see how it sounds. That's some great royalty free music right there. It's gonna be a rapper tonight. To improve the lighting, I'm installing two additional lighting sources for the desk. One is these RGB lighting strips, which I'll be installing behind my monitor and behind my desk to reduce eye fatigue when it's dark in the room and I'm staring at these bright screens. 
I had LASIK back in January. My eyes are a little more sensitive to bright light in the dark these days. For me, this was actually one of the most intimidating parts of doing this whole setup, even though it seems really simple. I had just never done it before. It did end up being a little frustrating just because it wasn't one long strip. It was four individual pieces that I had to figure out how to connect around these corners without it all coming apart. Since the controls and the Bluetooth app for these LED strip lights are super annoying, I'm just gonna bypass both of those and control them using a smart plug with my Google Home robot on my desk. The other light I'm adding is a nifty light bar that goes over my main monitor and shines directly down on the desktop, Jeez. avoiding the monitor itself so there's no glare. I really love this light because it doesn't take up any space on my desk, the wire runs behind my monitor, and it's touch operated and dimmable and looks pretty slick. You know, until now I used the lack of lighting in my office as an excuse to start work early and end at a reasonable time. But with this new lighting setup, I can completely destroy any semblance of a work-life balance and alienate myself from my girlfriend even further by locking myself in here night after night making YouTube videos. I really can't wait. And this cable wrangling cord thing kind of just wraps all of these cables up into one long black rope looking thing. It's just a much cleaner appearance than having seven different wires just popping out in every direction. Now let's talk about my keyboard. I'm using a Keychron K2 mechanical keyboard, a pretty popular keyboard for nerds like me who switch to mechanical keyboards. I like the clickety clack of my loud ass cherry blue switches, but as time went on, I actually found that it's too chunky and high up for my tastes, which isn't good for my occasional wrist pain. And something low profile and closer to the Apple keyboards are actually much more practical for me, while also looking slicker. I did a lot of research and I think I found the Shangri-La of keyboards for my purposes. This Logitech keyboard has a cool little shelf I can throw my iPad or iPhone in, and these buttons let me switch from device to device seamlessly, which is probably the next best thing to having iMessage on your desktop. I can also put my little to-do cards in here. That way I'm always looking directly at it and I can really keep my day on track. Another problem with the Keychron keyboard, the battery was dying all the time. This new keyboard supposedly has an amazing battery life lasting two years and it takes just regular AAA batteries. So I never have to worry about having an extra wire on my desk. I use this Razer gaming mouse and gaming keypad with a bunch of programmed macros for Adobe Premiere that save me a ton of time, and I'll die before I give those up. But to tie everything together, I put this big desk pad under them all. By the way, can we just talk about how beautiful this cable routing from the mouse is? I don't know how I never thought to run the USB cable into this little grommet. I'm pretty sure that's what that hole is intended for, but I never realized it until just now. I love it. Now my chair I actually found on the sidewalk. It was actually in good shape, has a mesh back, which is good for ventilation, keeping you cool. What I don't like is there's no arms and the bottom is cushioned, which means whoever owned the chair before was storing who knows how many months worth of farts in that cushion. So I feel like I'm sitting on a fart graveyard every time I get to work. One upgrade I should have done for my old chair a long time ago is gotten rid of the crappy caster wheels that come with all these chairs and switched them out for these roller skate wheels. The rugs won't bunch up when you roll back and forth over it. They glide across hardwood floor. It's just a lot easier to roll around on these wheels and it's only like 20 bucks. I considered getting the Herman Miller Aeron chair, which is kind of the industry standard for editors. It's got a mesh back, mesh bottom, fully adjustable. It's got lumbar support. I've worked in them for many, 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 many hours. Problem is they're incredibly expensive. I was gonna go on Craigslist oh, yeah. and pick one up for about $400, the cheapest I was seeing out here. But this chair I found on Amazon is only 275 and it gets shipped to my door and it's got a warranty and a return policy and all that. And I'm super happy with this chair. You can tilt back. Honestly, when I tilt all the way back in it, I could fall asleep like this. So if things ever really go south with the girlfriends, I feel completely comfortable sleeping in this chair in my office for weeks at a time if necessary, because I do not have good communication skills. So it's really nice to have that option. Now for a few final touches, a few trinkets that make the desk feel more inviting and welcoming. Of course, you gotta have the red swing line stapler candle. This one has a sandalwood smell to it, which is a nice masculine scent. This little USB fan, which is great for keeping me frosty while I'm editing. And that's it. I love the desk. 
The light strips look amazing. They add so much mood and vibe to the room. But 90% of the time, I'm just gonna be keeping it on a neutral whitish color, or maybe a little bit orange for a nighttime or relaxing atmosphere. It's so nice being able to finally, when I want to say write something, I can just push this whole desk pad ahead of me. That clears the entire desk up and I can just start writing. If I finish writing, put the notepad aside, bring it all back, ready to keep working. The hard drive shelf under the table works incredible. If I need to grab a shuttle drive, I can just plug it in directly under the table into the hub. If I have a bigger thing like a RAID array for a big project, I can plop it on the side of the desk, plug it into the Thunderbolt 3 hub, plug the power into the power grommet on the desk, and it's still mostly all out of the way. The speakers sound absolutely incredible. I can't believe I've gone the past six, eight months without a nice set of studio monitors up here. Check out how easy it is to go from working on something on the PC down to typing a text message and iMessage, and then going back to my important work on the computer. It's amazing. My words per minute on this keyboard is also significantly faster than it was with the mechanical keyboard. Now the thing that I'm proud about with this desk setup, even though aesthetically everything is much, much cleaner and better, it is every bit as functional as it was before. As you can see here, I'm still just a few button presses away from starting a YouTube video. So the total cost to upgrade everything on this desk was about $1,000. A lot of that cost went into the speakers and the chair, neither of which were strictly necessary. I mean, I guess none of this was actually necessary, but they make me happy, so. And boom, ready to start making another YouTube video. Again, check the links in the description for all of the products that I've used here today. And, uh, you know, subscribe, because I am gonna be using this monstrosity of a desk to make some awesome content very soon, and I want you guys to check it out. And in fact, I think I'm gonna get started right now and do some amazing work at this amazing desk. Here I go. Gonna be so efficient and get a lot of work done to...